As we saunter into the second month of this global pandemic and our age of quarantine, we have seen a major lack of trust in, well, virtually everything, right? Recently, there's been a lot of protests against the stay-at-home orders and even the realities of this virus. And there was an overwhelming amount of people that just wanted to get haircuts because a, a fresh fade is really what represents freedom. It's like these folks were scared that if their hair grows a bit too much, they might become hippies and start caring about their fellow man and eating veggies and realizing that socialism, uh, not that bad. Not that bad, actually. They might wake up from their conditioned corporate slavery and, and see that America isn't about freedom, but really veiled authoritarianism wrapped up in anti-intellectualism. Look, you don't need uh, long hair to see that. Okay, you, you you just need to let some neurons fire, which is, which is what's uh, what's available to you, d just deep underneath all of that hair. Now, calls for liberating each state and reinstating a sense of normalcy were made over Twitter, as the lack of trust turned into more and more conspiracy theories and opportunism for misinformation. So let's try to clear up this misinformation and look for a way forward from all this. And look, if you don't want to listen to this, I suppose you can just you know, shave off all your head and pair and protest. And uh, I really doubt that's going to prove much of anything. The confusion around this global pandemic stems from the name of the virus itself. Most of us believe that it is the 19th variation of the COVID strand of the coronaviruses, but that isn't actually accurate. The virus is SARS-CoV-2, and much like its predecessor, SARS-CoV-1 is a type of novel coronavirus. It's the second strand of the severe acute respiratory syndrome. This disease uh, is... Um, this is an edit point. The disease that the virus is responsible for is COVID-19, which was named by the World Health Organization for the year it was discovered. They are, if nothing, but a beacon of clever nomenclatures. And the confusion stems from the way the WHO decided to introduce the term. Because of the negative connotation about Asian countries surrounding SARS and humanity's inclination to choose fear and hatred, over understanding and compassion, they decided to call it the virus that causes COVID-19, and then eventually just called it COVID-19. And now even that's evolved, as some people are calling it the case of the vids, which makes it sound like an STI that you get from sleeping with a former MTV VJ. And then you have some folks that are calling it Rona, which gives it a far more regal quality. I suppose, uh, since only rich people can afford the te testing, uh, maybe it's fitting. I think we'll eventually refer to this as the virus formerly known as COVID-19, but more accurately called SARS-CoV-2. Get over your racism and embrace the scientific nomenclature and pick up a book. Look, I, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, but I do think it's pleasingly accurate. Now, Twitter trended with the hashtag film your hospital as people drove past, uh, past hospitals, making conjectures that the hospitals were actually not being used at all. This was based on parking lot occupancy and whether there was or was not a tumbleweed rolling in front of the place. Now, there aren't any firsthand reports of occupancy of these hospitals because of a little known privacy act called HIPAA, or the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. People in hospitals don't want cameras shoved in their face, and uh, neither do healthcare professionals who are just trying to do their job. Hell, I wouldn't either. Even when I'm recording this, if I had somebody else filming me, film myself, uh, that'd be awkward as hell. Even the doctors are barred from talking about what goes on inside of these hospitals, even if it's about procedural concerns. 
That was the case for Dr. Ming Lin, who was fired from Bellingham's Peace Health St. Joseph Medical Center for publicly pointing out that, that patients who have COVID-19 are being kept in the same spaces as regular ICU patients. He blew the whistle on improper patient care without giving names or photographs of the patients and was fired because of it. Look, Dr. Lin forgot that America has a very strict shoot the messenger policy. The hospital in Bellingham is staffed by Team Health, a staffing firm owned by a hedge fund company that basically made a strong stance for protecting their public image rather than doing the right thing. I mean, someone's really been taking cues from the Democratic Party, right? Say nice things, but don't actually stand by it. Get that photo op and ignore the existence of the pores. Now, since having regular patients and COVID-19 patients in the same space seems like a real dick move, the ideal thing to do would be create sanitized spaces that was specifically set to handle the testing, treatment, and care of the pandemic patients. At the current moment, testing kits are in short supply and are very expensive. And not only that, the tests aren't actually testing for the disease COVID-19, but rather the presence of the virus SARS-CoV-2, which would explain why folks that are testing positive are sometimes asymptomatic, meaning they're not showing the symptoms of the disease COVID-19. But since testing kits are in short supply and the manufacturing wig of America has been corrupted by the parasite of unfettered capitalism, that's not particularly a solution we'll see in the near future. Instead, we are taking baby steps to ensure that babies are born without knowing who their fathers are. That's right. Currently in our hospitals, to reduce contact with the outside world, partners of pregnant women are not allowed to be present at the birthing of their child. As an unseen side effect of COVID-19, uh, we are going to see an overwhelming amount of daddy issues, just an astronomical rise in daddy issues. Most hospitals have canceled elective surgeries, including dental ones, which means that your nose job doesn't matter and your haircut and eyebrow trimming, uh, well, they never have because they're not really surgeries. And no matter how much you yell about them, they're never going to be considered surgeries. Look, Vanity is very much non-essential, and it doesn't matter how uncomfortable you are. At the end of all this, you'll be fine. Now, this move would make sense, considering you want all available medical staff to fight the pandemic. But with testing kits in short supply or far too expensive for regular people to get them, this seems like another way to just sit idle and do what Team Health Kit did show face with no action behind it. Had this come with a plan to use the manufacturing power of America to create test kits while ensuring that those that are on the front lines are taken care of, we would be far less stir crazy and paranoid as a country. Had there been a push for instating Medicare for all and universal basic income tied in with the rent freeze, people would be less angry and distressful of the leadership in place. Because of this, some people have had to take matters into their own hands. And no, I am not talking about people that are buzzing their own hair to combat socialism. I'm talking about doctors like Armin Henderson in Miami who have been treating and testing the homeless population while making sure that they have tents to sleep in and food to eat so that they can practice necessary social distancing measures. Now, data shows that homeless folks are spreading the virus pretty quickly throughout their communities. In homeless communities the, that have been tested, close to 50% of the homeless population has the virus, and a lot of them aren't showing symptoms of the disease COVID-19. Now, Dr. Henderson was recently racially profiled by the Miami Police Department. He was committing the crime of being black in Florida and not partying in Miami. How dare you, huh? With that party, huh? All right. As Dr. Henderson was loading up his van with tents and cleaning out boxes and setting them on the curb for regular trash pickup, an officer handcuffed him for littering, quote unquote littering. Dr. Henderson's wife had to go in and get his ID to prove that he actually lived there. Now, 
we have to think about how dangerous of a situation this was for the police officer. I mean, th these cardboard boxes have been known to give folks paper cuts, and that is a DEF CON alpha level boo-boo. Okay, sometimes they require two band-aids, a, a, a few orange slices, and even a snuggle to make you feel better. As a doctor, I am surprised uh, Dr. Henderson did not realize the weapon he was carrying. With the lack of testing, horrible treatment of doctors, and isolated pregnancies, where do we go from here? Well, there are a few options, and they all involve shedding the idea of normalcy and pushing for a better future. One that involves logic, compassion, understanding, and a lack of fear, hate, and profits. Currently, the WHO has said approximately 2 to 3% of the world has been infected with the virus SARS-CoV-2. But not all of us are showing the symptoms that we have the disease COVID-19. This information is based on the antibody tests that have come out in recent weeks. And this puts the fatality rate at under 1% in most places. Now, before everybody starts screaming, open the country, freedom, my hair, dear God, my hair. This is happening as we are social distancing and reducing our contact with other folks. Had we gone on uh, with business as usual, these numbers would likely be way higher. With this in mind, we could start a slow reintroduction of the population. Denmark, for example, has thought about sending its kids back to school because kids are carriers of the virus but not transmitters. And after a while, they can reintroduce teenagers, young adults, and this will increase the amount of the population that eventually ends up with antibodies, and then we'll eventually be able to open up all of the spaces and be ready to go to support our communities. Now, in order for this plan to, to work, uh, we have to put in a plan for a universal basic income with rent control and ensure that people that would get sick are taken care of. That would have to be done through a paid sick leave and Medicare for all. In America, this means that the establishment and the corporate leaders are going to have to let go of their profit-driven agendas and move forward with a humanitarian one. The other option is to create a treatment plan for the sick. This would mean that pe the people that get sick from the viruses have a place to go and recover. That would mean expanding the healthcare system and ensuring that everyone is taken care of, which once again brings us to Medicare for all and paid sick leave. This way, if you're sick, you don't have to worry about missing work and pay. And this was the problem at the start of this pandemic in the States anyway, this obsession with needing work because that's how people afford healthcare and their bills. Getting sick by any means isn't the worker's fault. So why are they being punished for it? Now, going back to normalcy will only lead us right back to this moment. There are a lot of variables with this virus that's leaving people in a place of uncertainty and paranoia and destitution. But we shouldn't be looking to go back to normal. Normal was bullshit. Okay, Normal was firing a doctor for revealing the uncaring truth of a profit-driven healthcare system. Normal was a doctor helping vulnerable populations suffering from a pandemic getting arrested in front of his home for being black. Norman, normal was championing anti-intellectualism and corporatism, which go hand in hand. Normal was not valuing your own community and ignoring the struggles of your fellow humans. We need better than normal. Our way forward doesn't come from supporting this status quo, but for fighting for a better version of the world. The callous winner-take-all ideologies have lost and will continue to lose the more we choose to take them. Look, the truth is that we're all in this together, and the less we bicker about going back to the yesteryears of complacency and corporate wage slavery, the better our future will look. Stand for the ideas that can will and are moving us forward and we will get through this with our heads held high and yes with our pairs cut properly
Uh, I'm going to be doing a live Zoom comedy show. The test show is Saturday, April 25th. Tickets are available for that right now. This is a test show. The test show is free Saturday, April 25th. There are a few spots left. Click that link uh, in the description of the episode to grab your ticket. Come hang out at this test show. Come help me figure out you know, the little kinks of doing a Zoom live stand-up comedy show um, and, and be a part of that. And then we'll figure out when uh, the real real show is going to be. Uh, so that's Saturday, April 25th is the Zoom test comedy show. Um, you can always donate uh, to help support this show, Road Reflections, Forkful of Noodles, the dispatches that go out by going to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums, all of the past videos that I've put out, um, and, uh, by the way, right now, all my stand-up comedy albums, if you go to the band camp, uh, they are available as pay what you want, pay what you want, which means they're basically available for free. So if you are going through a difficult time, if you would like to listen to some stand-up comedy, uh, you like what I do, bam, they're all available. You can just hit the download button and enjoy all that stand-up comedy. And I'm going to be coming out with my brand new stand-up comedy album, Politely Angry, on June 1st. June 1st, I'm releasing my brand new stand-up comedy album. It'll be available on all of the streaming platforms, all of the downloading platforms. But once again, I want to point you to the Bandcamp page uh, because on the Bandcamp page, um, they, are, they are the most artist-friendly platform. And not only that, uh, but there will be bonus tracks available and there will be a second version of the album itself. So you get way more bang for your buck going to the Bandcamp page. Once again, um, everything is available on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Thanks, folks.